Is your Doberman rough playing all the time and you just don't really know how to solve it? Well, we've got the video for you. Welcome back to the Fenrir Doberman Show. My name's Joe and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. We are dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the Doberman and then how to become a high level canine leader so you can raise your very own. So if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you never miss a future upload. The Doberman is a beautiful breed. However, if they're rough playing all the time, that could be a really serious issue. Whether it's with kids or whether it's with other dogs, it's something that you definitely want to get sorted. So today, we're going to be tuning into a webinar that the canine behaviorist and founder of FenrirCanineLeaders.com, Will, has recorded all about dogs that are rough playing and how to deal with that situation. So, over to you, Will. So here we've got a quick fire webinar for my thoughts and opinions on rough playing with dogs, rough housing, dogs playing rough with each other, dogs playing rough with humans. Just what are my kind of theories, thoughts and principles on these kind of issues? Whether you're looking at working in the profession, like myself as a canine behaviourist or a dog trainer, or maybe you're just an inquisitive owner and you really want to understand from a little bit of a high level perspective of what these kind of behaviours mean and how you should think about them. Now when it comes to dog ownership as a whole it's one of those things that has so many different thoughts, opinions and theories on this topic and ultimately and unfortunately um, as kind of human nature is we often break away into teams and then those teams just spend all time arguing with each other and getting absolutely nowhere. How I look at that as a overarching macro level of canine ownership is that for me in my opinion there is some non-negotiables when it comes to canine ownership after those non-negotiables we then have negotiables things that are subjective to each different owner now for me a non-negotiable is that you absolutely must provide your dog regardless of its breed age your lifestyle your family you must provide it with excellent leadership once you provide that dog with excellent leadership you build a wonderful relationship when you have that wonderful relationship you can then communicate impeccably with your dog not only the things that you do want but also the behaviors that you don't want to see for me that's non-negotiable in terms of the communication non-negotiables I think that we should make sure that we offer our dogs a wonderful sit stay heal recall that for me keeps the dog safe from itself and safe from others around it if we can teach those things a dog that for me is a non-negotiable I also think that there's some non-negotiables around manners in terms of a dog shouldn't jump up humans I think that that can cause significant concern it makes it miserable for certain people um, I personally think that behaviours like that are non-negotiable. Things like resource guarding should be addressed, non-negotiable. Obviously, reactivity towards humans or dogs, with the only caveat being around kind of working dogs or in personal protection roles, um, you can have that discussion. But when we talk about just companion ownership for the everyday owner, for me, those things are non-negotiable. Now, kind of everything else sits in that kind of subjective level. For you, you might never want to have your dog inside the house. Some people have the dog sleep on the bed with them. Instead of arguing of, of which is right or wrong, for me, if all of those non-negotiable areas are in place, that's simply a subjective opinion on the owner's part. Hey guys, very quickly, I just wanted to ask, are you following us over on Instagram? If you're not, there's two accounts I would love for you to check out. The first one is our brand account, at Femria Canine Leaders, where you can see more about our industry-leading products that we create. If you're interested in following me personally, that's at I am Will Atherton, where you can see behind the scenes of me working with some of the most extreme behavior cases in the world and what it takes to run these kind of YouTube channels. And maybe if you just want to be able to come over and chat with me, that's the place for you. So there'll be links down in the description box for both of our Instagram pages. I'd love for you to come and check them out and hopefully we'll chat over there. Now, there's tons of different examples we can give there, but the one I want to dial in on in this video is around rough play. Now, again, like humans are different, dogs are different. Some dogs love to rough house and rough play. Some dogs don't like it and it's just not fun or enjoyable for them. Rough play can go right and it can be a wonderful relationship building tool with you and your dog or with dogs in a pack. They'll often sometimes rough play if the non-negotiables are in place. And that's the point I want to take you to take away from this mini webinar. I love rough housing with my dogs. I absolutely love it. My wife hates it. She doesn't like to do it. Her subjective idea of living with a dog is to have a dog that's calm, quiet, and in the evening when our boys have gone to bed and she wants to relax, 
she'll welcome a dog up onto a sofa and she'll have a cuddle with it. Her subjectively, that is fine. And I have no issue with that whatsoever because all the dogs that live in our house or with us have those non-negotiable fundamentals in place, which then allows us these subjective things. When it comes to rough play, I love rough playing with dogs. Big, powerful, mastiff dogs, are just they're just fun to rough house with, roll around on the floor with them, have a bit of fun with them. If you've got those non-negotiable areas in play, you can instantly make the decision to turn it off and say enough is enough and that it's done. You initiate play as the leader in that dog's life and the leader in that relationship with your dog and you say when that behavior is enough and that you want to stop. It really is that simple. If you don't have the ability to stop roughhousing and decide when to start and decide when to stop, then you have a fundamental non-negotiable problem in your leadership, relationship, and communication with your dog. If you are in that category, then I don't think rough housing is a good idea with your dog. You also need to be able to have that relationship between multiple dogs. So I'll often let my dogs play and I'll let them play quite rough and sometimes they'll become quite vocal with each other. But if I see that one dog is playing a little bit too roughly or with a dog that isn't really enjoying it and that dog is looking up to me for guidance and direction, displaying that it doesn't want this to happen but because of the relationship I am going to take ownership of that situation and tell the other dog that enough is enough and to leave it alone. I have control in those situations because of the leadership relationship and communication that is fundamental and non-negotiable when it comes to owning a dog or owning multiple dogs. So when it comes to rough housing or rough play do your non-negotiable fundamentals of leadership, relationship and communication and then it's completely a subjective decision. What allows it to be subjective is because you have the ability to turn it on and you have the ability to turn it off. If you don't, then you shouldn't do it because it can get you too far and people can get hurt. But if you have the ability to turn it on and off, you control it, you decide when enough is enough and you can maintain that everybody involved is safe. If you don't want your children to rough house with the dogs, you have the ability to ensure that that never happens. Do you see the point we're trying to make? So I don't want to keep banging on about it, but non-negotiable fundamentals of leadership, relationship, and communication with your dog will change everything. That then allows you to make your own subjective decisions on what you deem acceptable with those gray area things because you have the ability to keep yourself, the dog, and everybody else safe and in control. Focus on the fundamentals and everything else is easy and we everybody doesn't have to spend all day arguing on the internet about who's theory and whose approach is right or wrong. There you have it guys, some really useful information, some tips and tricks that you can put into practice with your Doberman to stop them from rough playing. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, get involved in the comments down below as we would love to hear from you. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell as we have two dedicated videos coming out every single week. So I can't wait to see you in the next episode of the Fenrir Doberman Show.